Mike Sando, the athletic, excited to have him. We'll be having him again once the quarterback tiers come out. I do have a tiers question in there for him, but I want to talk NFL free agency. Uh, he does as good of a job as anybody of getting just people from the league, front office execs, coaches, commenting on everything that's going on. And as of now, he has a big recap up on The Athletic about free agency. So I want to get into all that. But let's start with the Diggs trade last night. Uh, it felt like it was running its course based on the emotion part of it with his brother basically saying, like, get him out of there. Yeah. Um, Diggs seems to become unhappy at, at multiple spots. So. I get that part of it, but from a football needs standpoint, I know we're going to get into kind of the dead money and, sure. and all the arguments that were happening last night. Like that, I was leading. Think- I was spearheading those on <laughs> on our favorite app. Uh, what do you think motivated Buffalo's decision here? I think it's a combination of where they're at in their relationship with Diggs and kind of where they're at as a team now. Right when they signed him to the extension two years ago, they probably thought that this window would be. They'd be at the right at the top in their window a little bit longer, but the way things have fallen through a combination of, you know, probably some injuries, their staff has changed. Uh, they the bill has kind of come due for them. So this off season for them has been more about pairing back and getting out of relationships with some of the tenured players that were on the team, the Jordan Poyers and and those types of guys who gave a lot to the team, but they're really not part of the future at this point. So. I think it wasn't just a given that they would get rid of Stefan Diggs now because there are ramifications and we'll talk about those. But like for where they're at as a team and how much that has changed, even though they're still going to compete, they're going to probably make the playoffs and Josh Allen gives them a chance. It's like they're in this resetting period and decided, you know what, rather than spend 18 and a half million cash to maintain a relationship that, like you said, has run its course just like it did for Diggs in Minnesota. Let's get out now. Let's get something. And, uh, you know, we'll take our lumps. But we still got until the start of the season also to, to, you know, maybe draft a wide receiver or figure things out. Just change the dynamic of our team. So do you think this means Buffalo, I mean, they have to, after losing both Diggs and Gabe Davis, they have to do something in the draft early. Oh, yeah, you would, you would think so. And And that's, you know, I don't think Minnesota was in as extreme of a position, but Remember at the time they traded Diggs and drafted Justin Jefferson. So that would be the dream scenario. You get a great uh, wide receiver. That probably isn't going to happen to that extreme, but yes, they're going to have to do that. And, and, you know, they may be in the later market too, uh, whether there's a trade down the line or a veteran out there, you know, OBJ is out there, you know, somebody like that, that, that was good last year and just uh, probably didn't live up to his pedigree. And so the, the perception of him might be that he didn't have as good of a year, but he can still play. Let's talk about the money part of this, because I think there is some value in going, well, wait, if this is your depth chart situation now here, and you're taking on, what is it, $28 million as opposed to 31 to have kept him? Um there was a lot of people on your side of the argument last night saying you don't understand because it's cash versus yeah. cap hit yeah. where I think the football side of it, it's like, well, if I'm already paying for him, why is he not? Right. Here? Right. Well, and I think the third part of that is the relationship between the player and the team and is it tenable and for how long. Right. And especially in this situation, as the team resets a little, maybe they take their lumps a little bit. Right. Maybe it's not going to be as smooth of sailing. We've already seen. So that component, if they felt like, if they felt like he was the consummate team guy who was going to do everything the right way and set the standard for their team, maybe they don't do this. But that's not where they're at in the relationship with him. So that's a huge component of it. The cap part that gets misunderstood, the part that I was trying to point out is 48 hours ago, he was counting $28 million against the cap. Now he's counting 31. And, and I agree. Most people are like, oh, my gosh, you're 31 for a player who's not on the roster. I get it. But it's not like he was counting uh, five million against the cap, and this decision pushed you up to thirty-one, right? If you're the team and you're viewing that we're already in for the twenty-eight, that's not a new part of this thing. We're reevaluating our relationship with the player, and so once we decide that we're not, uh, we 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 want out, and and we're not doing this for the long term, we don't want to kick in. you know, another 18 and a half million cash this year and then have a bigger cap number for next year. 
the exit isn't that hard because all that happens is his cap charge goes from 28 to 31. So the trade itself cost them $3 million of cap space and saved them $18.5 million of money, of actual money. So instead of putting ourselves of in actual a, money, I think actual is cash, the thing that always actual, gets lost yeah. in this. Like you've reminded us the, from the Kyler Murray stuff and you go, hey, they're operating differently than other owners. They've already paid Kyler that. And it's almost a sense of like, hey, we've yeah. already actually given you the cash part of this. Yes. So we'd still like you to play the position because we're not just going to eat it if we're, we still have a question mark about your future. So the cash part of this, I think, always gets lost, even more so than the but cap. But there's always been a media fan fascination and, with the cap and this desire to explain just how amazing it is that these teams manage this complex uh, you know, set of rules. And that's not really how it is for the, for the teams. Uh, and that's just what I was trying to point out is, is – is once they're out on the player, they're taking three additional million to save 18 and a half. Put yourself in the owner's shoes. If you're like, you know what? Th- we've kind of had it. We can see what's coming. There's going to be some more issues here. And what happens? We can talk about this from the Houston side. What happens when Justin Jefferson goes to $32 million a year? Does, is Stefan Diggs happy? Does he want to go a little more, right? Not he, happy, I would imagine. He, and he thinks he's as, as good, right? Of course. I mean, and, you know. and he averaged about half of his production for the second half of last year for whatever reason. Maybe that was the coordinator change or, or whatever. But I think from the team standpoint, they're not not—they're seeing the negatives. They're, they're seeing the positives and the negatives. And I think most people who, from the outside, see the positives. They see the stats. They see 107 catches, 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns. Uh, the team is not going to come out and say all the reasons why they don't want him on the team. They never are, right? But we have to be able to read between the lines on that and see why uh, this makes more sense from them than it does to the outside, especially where they're at in their build. And they're they're tearing it down a little bit right now. They're taking a step back. And asking yourself, hey, are we getting a second rounder next year? Like, no. Right. So I think that part of it, even though, you know, I look at them and go, man, you're taking away a weapon where there were certain games I felt like Allen was like only looking for digs sure. because it was the only guy that he trusted. But when we talk about the dead money, you know, this is this is more new NFL history here because I remember the Antonio Brown stuff that was going back to Pittsburgh and we had real plugged in people going, no one's ever taken that kind of dead cap hit. They're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. And then it just happens. And I was and- not one of those people because I understand the difference between what he's already counting and what he's going to count when you make the move. If that's small, it's an easier move for the team to make when they've grown tired of the player, they don't want in the relationship. And that disfavor, that part of not wanting him there for reasons that go beyond what he can do on the field is a big component for teams. And it was exactly why Antonio Brown got traded. And it's not to the same degree, I don't think, for Stephon Diggs, but we can all see that it hasn't been a happy relationship, and that's a huge part of it. And when you start factoring in the growth of the cap and the projections moving forward, it's just reality that the dead cap money doesn't sting the way that it used to sting. The cap has jumped almost fifty million in the last two years. The projections on the overcap this morning for twenty twenty seven are a three hundred and fourteen million dollar salary cap number for NFL teams. I mean, you know, who knows well, what that'll be, but that's the projection today. So I think it's just easier pill to swallow than it was in the and, past. But also also think of this. We know they're saving the eighteen and a half million and it helps their cap in twenty five. Let's just say that instead of, uh, let's just say for the Bills, instead of this counting 31, let's say it counted 18, and they saved cash. So, so what does that change for this year? Right now, big list of free agents to go sign for huge money and receiver? How would that be any different? If they saved money, people would be like, oh, hey, and they saved this cap money. Who cares? It's April. Right. What are we doing with the cap money? The good part about this is that we're touching on something that I want to explore deeper with you. And it is the history of signing free agents. It is comically bad. Like it's so (laughs) bad. Like whenever you're reminded, but we lose track of like, oh, what did that guard sign for? And that 29 year old defensive end. And why did that middle linebacker at 33 get this number? So there's a very simple explanation of it. And I remember the first time like an NBA GM told me about it where, you know, I've, 
shared this with other people, so I'm sharing it with you, but the audience has heard it. And he's like, you guys in the media are just morons about cap space in the NBA. <laughs> just idiots. I yeah. was like, eh. I love he's it. like, every one of you guys talk about like, oh, and they'll clear this much cap. It was like, for who? For who? The guy, the team said they didn't want to sign? Or in the yeah. NBA, it's even worse where it's like, there's only like five of us that the guy will even pick if he's that good. And so right. if you're not one of those teams, like, what are you hoarding all this cap space for? Like the, if a guy scored 20 a game and his, his homegrown team doesn't want to resign him, like that's all I need to know <laughs> that I don't hey. want to spend my cap space on him. So there is a winner's curse to all of this, but it's always going to happen. Like, I don't want to be completely dismissive of the process being like, well, no one should ever sign a free agent because the history is so bad. And you have to ask yourself, why is he a free agent in the first place? So, yeah. And obviously, you know, in Dick's case, he was acquired by trade, but let's just say they really liked him and they thought, man, we cannot live without the 107 catches. They just, they could extend them. They right. could do cash and, and give them some money and say, hey, we got a superstar receiver for the next three years manageable cap. If you wanted to do that, that's not the evaluation they want to do. And if they did that, we'd be going, what are they doing? 